So we're going to get started. I, I wish I could tell you today we're going to be splitting atoms, but we're not. You know, to me, advertising is it is difficult, but you know, I don't find it as hard as, as maybe some others. Um, by the way, if you have any questions along the way, it'd be really boring if I just sat here and talked, you know, myself. So please feel free to to ask any questions at any time. Uh, just, you know, click your unmute button or whatever and shoot away and, and I'll do the best I can to answer the questions. But I am going to walk through the trust funnel process, you know, what I call the trust funnel process and the mistakes that I see. And I'm going to walk through the art of advertising. So you're really kind of getting two classes uh, that I've taught in the past that um, we're going to put together and, and, and make it one class. But, you know, for my, my background, I was a Marine Corps infantry officer. What did I know about advertising? You know, absolutely nothing. <laughs> when I first got involved, I just didn't know a whole lot about advertisement or really selling for that matter. There were some things that came natural to me, but you know, for me, I had to learn just like everybody else. I had to learn and I started investing and I'll talk about that here soon enough. I actually started off in insurance in PNC. I was selling auto and home insurance. I built a small little book of business. Um, I just didn't like it as much as some other things, you know, so then I went into final expense, mortgage protection, got a series 65. So I do assets under management and all that today, but eventually I ended up in Medicare and I kind of do all of these, except I, I really don't do PNC anymore. I don't at all. Actually, I have no book of business with PNC, but I definitely still sell mortgage protection and final expense. I still do asset center management annuities, Medicare, uh, but we lead with Medicare in our agency and in, in, uh, in, in with our agents. Obviously now we're we're uh, doing, if you're in the group, we're doing, uh, which we were just talking about, uh, ACA, which is Obamacare. Uh, so, you know, that's been a nice uh, source of revenue for us. But I'm the uh, president of Patriot Family Financial. We're located in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and we're actually having a good weather day today. It's about 75 degrees out, actually. So we're, we're the only ones where it's not a 100 degrees right now, it seems like. Um, all right. So let's talk about my advertisement journey. You know, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I, I just, I thought the world was this way and I learned it was a different way. And, um, I, I really lived in a, a small shell in that environment and I had to kind of grow. Um, and this is the process and where I got to, and this is a very quick version of it, but like many of you, I bought exclusive leads that I found were not exclusive. The very, I got my license in PNC and and uh, I was just so excited. I was ready to go. I had everything ready to go, all the software, the whole bit. I bought an exclusive lead for $8. <laughs> this probably sounds familiar. And I got the lead and I picked up the phone. I was just so excited. I waited a couple of minutes. You know, I got this lead. It was live. And at least that's what I was told. And uh, I called the lead and, you know, they, they said some nice colorful adjectives <laughs> or words that came my way. Like get the F off his phone, stop calling me. I'm like, but you're my exclusive lead. <laughs> right. And so, you know, as most of you know, leads are not exclusive if you're buying them from somewhere else for the most part. And, you know, I learned very quickly if I didn't do my own advertising, then I was not in control of my own destiny in my own business. And I believe that sincerely for every agent uh, and for every business owner. Um, if you're not doing your own thing, you are subject to somebody else's thing. And if they decide they don't want to do it anymore, then your business is cut off. So sure, there's lots of vendors out there, but you'll see the problems with vendors as we go. Now, I believe advertising is an art and a science, and I'm going to talk about the art and the science as I go here. But I've personally, it's, the art has just come natural to me. The science, much harder. I can tell you that most people can't do either. And I have hardly, I have not met many people that can do both. It, 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 um, it takes kind of a unique person. Um, in my own brain, when I'm doing accounting, I struggle with the art side of it, um, but I can do the science at this point. So for me, I have to kind of separate when I do things that are very logical, and, and like accounting, for example, and, and those kind of numbers. And, and I just, I'll, I'll move all that to a certain day. Usually I do it on Fridays, actually. And uh, and I won't do, um, you know, advertisement on those days, but the rest of the week I will. And I don't think about things like accounting and so on. Um, I've taken lots of courses. I have definitely spent several hundred thousand dollars on uh, advertising and learning all the various things. Uh, for me, again, mostly what I had to learn, I feel, was the science side of it. And we'll get into what I mean by that. Um, so then I started selling leads to other agents, IMOs, call centers, thousands, hundreds of thousands of leads at this point I've generated. It, it kind of depends on uh, the month, but right now we, we're a little slower. I probably generate around 4,000 leads a month, I would say. There's been months where we've had 20,000 or 30,000 leads. So, you know, it just depends. During AEP, there's going to be a lot of leads, you know, that, that we're generating. I use various methods to generate leads, digital SEO, direct mail, TV, radio, newspaper, uh, by the way, local newspaper, expensive typically, but a very good source of leads for you, the agent, or you, the business owner, depending on how you do it. 
Uh, Google, Yahoo, Bing, competitor websites. I get asked about that all the time. That's off of Google. You can advertise right on your, your competitor's websites, depending on who your competitor is. I've definitely got blogs, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, TikTok. I, I get about 4% of my leads off of video games, off of cell phone video games. It's the craziest yeah. thing. Never thought in a million years I, I would get that, but whatever. <laughs> I, I thought, seniors play video games too, apparently. LinkedIn. <laughs> I haven't had as much success on LinkedIn, but I do it. Uh, we, we definitely have done the cold calling thing, cold email, which I don't love. Let's call it warm email certainly works. Text, messenger. So pretty much have run the gambit of, of ads. In a normal busy month, I spend around 100000 a month. In, in an off season, uh, maybe 30000 on a low month. Um, it kind of just depends on you know what we're doing and how busy we are. AEP, I'll spend a hundred grand a month, easy. So I want to walk you through what I believe to be the trust process from lead to client. And then we're going to move into the art a little bit. But, you know, what is trust? You know, and I don't want to sit here and read a definition to you. Everybody can read it. Hopefully you can see it on the screen there. But the bottom line is you want to develop trust in the sales process. And in, in, in insurance specifically, for some reason, really a lot of ads, and I'm going to show you some ads where I think, it, you know, people go wrong. The trust process at some point in the process, whether it's from the lead itself or the sales pitch that's being given, something is broken along the way for most people and it affects your ability to sell. <clears throat> and so I believe in a trust process from beginning to end. And I'm going to walk you through that. So <clears throat> they need to trust you. So the ad needs to be in your brand, your name, if you can, at all possible. You're helping them with their healthcare, if you're if you're an insurance agent, a Medicare agent, for example, uh, but you can change that word healthcare for you know PNC, you can change it for HVAC or whatever you're you're doing. It's all the same stuff. If you break the trust anywhere along the path of being sold, and that's from the the lead itself all the way to when they're purchasing from you, and fr frankly, your customer service, you're breaking that trust. And, and as you break that trust at any point in the process of selling from lead to sale, or let's call it lead to customer service, then your chance of selling that person is, is low every single time. And what I see most of the time from my perspective is that, especially when it comes to agents, is that it's being broken at every single step. And it, it's, it's why closing rates are so low and there's a lot of mistrust and stuff like that. So let's talk about the reality that I have seen. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this as well, but the prospect sees an ads that, that's in somebody else's info or somebody else's brand instead of whoever's trying to sell it. Um, so a prospect sees an ad, and if you have any questions, again, just unmute and shoot anytime, it's fine. But a prospect will see an ad with somebody else's brand. You want to have it in your brand. The prospect sees the ad and knows that the ad is likely false, but they respond just in case. We've all done this. The agent then responds to the lead and confirms the ad is not true. In the, and I'm talking from the mind of the um, of the client. They'll say, well, yeah, but let me tell you how it really works, right? Um, the ad was misleading, but the agent keeps trying. And so right there, the chance of you, the salesperson of closing anybody is lower than if it was trustworthy. The prospect may or may not agree to an appointment, usually end up with um, low appointment show rates, whether it's in person, over the phone or whatever. And then there's a lot of cold door knocking if you're a field agent and so on. The prospect will meet with the agent and the agent tries to talk the client into buying. The prospect may or may not become a client, likely won't um, because this process has been broken in multiple occasions. And I would say this is how I've seen at least 90%, but certainly higher, um, letting a couple people in. What I see all the time, and I'm going to show you some examples of some craziness uh, that I've seen. And, and, I know, and I know everybody in here, if you've had any experience selling anything, you, you, you should already kind of have an idea what I'm talking about. The problem with this is it takes tremendous skill for you, the salesperson, in this 98% reality of this false or misleading or non-trustworthy process. You can definitely still make a living doing it, and plenty of agents do, but why go through all that when you don't have to? So where is the trust broken? It's it's broken typically by third-party lead vendors. You know They don't care what you sell. They only care what they sell, which is the lead, right? And Frankly, they're selling the lead over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, which is why, you know, I had the experience I had when I first got started. Anywhere along the line of the sales funnel where something is broken or different from the original message starts the lack of trust in the eyes of the client. So when I say your trust funnel lead process, this is my trust funnel lead process. Um, the prospect sees an ad that has your info, your brand, the ad copy and the image or the video that you use 
for the ad copy and vice versa, they match. And I'm going to show you some here soon that don't match. You just have to go to your Facebook page and use your thumb and scroll on your phone. And you're going to see what I'm talking about um, as you uh, as you go through this. You're going to see this in the future. But the bottom line, your video and your ad copy should match or your image and your ad copy should, should match. The landing page, so if they click and go to a page or some sort of follow-on process, it should match exactly what was in the ad copy, exactly what was in your image or in your video. All of it should match. The prospect then trusts the ad and completes the process to become a lead, which is how you can get very low lead costs because everything just looks good, it makes sense, and it all matches up. The agent then responds to the ad and in some way confirms that the ad is true. Yeah, we're going to help you with this. They may still not believe you, um, but you're confirming as the salesperson that it is true. And so the prospect agrees to an appointment. Um, the prospect meets with the agent and the agent's uh, script, whatever they're using, whether it's an in-person presentation or over the phone or whatever, the uh, the script that you're using, your sales presentation matches the ad copy which matches the video, which matches the landing page. Everything is the same. And that's how we do it here in our office. It's why we sell a pretty substantial amount of policies for, for X number of agents. It's how we do it. That right there, if you're going to take a picture of anything, this is what everybody, in my opinion, should do. And that is, again, everything has to match up from the beginning to the end. And if it doesn't, the likelihood of you getting a sale decreases drastically along each step. Most lead vendors, they don't sell what you sell. They sell leads. They, they don't sell insurance. Or if you're an HVAC person or a plumber, they sell leads. And that's how they make their profit. Okay, And in, in an insurance business, there happens to be several hundred thousand new people every single year that are coming in to buy leads that are going to leave. And so they don't know that this lead vendor wasn't reputable or whatever. I can tell you, they don't care what the lead process is or what the process is to generate that lead. Meaning it could be a non-compliant lead. I see this all the time. I kind of got into a spat with somebody the other day about this. They're teaching agents how to run ads for Medicare and those ads are completely not compliant. You know, you, you have to have a compliant process and this isn't a, I'm not the compliance police. You can do what you want to do, but you you know, it, it's just, it's a, it's a rough way to go when you're going through lead vendors. They resell the lead that they sold you multiple times over and over and over, even though it's exclusive. Okay. What does a prospect want? Just what would you want? You, an advertisement or a lead process that solves their problem? They want the agent to solve their problem. Um, they want complete trust in the process from lead to client without deviation from the original thing that made them a lead in the first place. Um, and, and to me, that sounds logical, but I'm here to tell you that it does. It's very rare for some reason uh, in the insurance business. So, you know, you need to care about them as if they were your own parent or your own child. What would you want your parent or your child to go through from the lead process all the way to the sale? It's just common sense to me, but for some reason, common sense is an uncommon virtue. <laughs> um, so the art of advertising itself, we're going to get into the advertisement bit a little bit. Uh, and we're moving quite, a, quite fast here. So again, if you got any questions, you know, along the way, then just click off your mute and, uh, and let me know. But advertising is an art and a science. In my opinion, most people cannot do both or they can do one and not the other. I have tried to teach people some stuff and they, they either don't want to do it or they're just incapable of doing it. I firmly believe that everybody's capable if they just, you know, put their mind to it, especially if you're a business owner, an entrepreneur. Um, so what is the art and the science? In my opinion, the art is the ad copy, the pictures, the colors, the size, the look, uh, the format. What is the science? Well, that's the timing. When is the ad going to hit? The data, the tracking, for example, Google Analytics or Facebook Pixels and how to install those and how to use them properly. The statistics, uh, the sequence of events, that is the science. Um, again, I'm particularly good at the art. I, I uh, was not good at the science, but the science is... Um, uh, I, I'm certainly better at it today, but I think the art is probably the hardest part for, for most people, I, I, I think. But the science is just a learn logical thing and you can do it. You just have to learn how to do it and how to you know install a pixel, for example, if it's Facebook and, and get it onto a landing page or, or whatever you're doing with it. But the point is, it's, it's just information that you have to learn. And that's where I really had to learn a lot. And it's where I've spent a lot of money in my journey, you know, generating leads. John? Yeah. yeah, this is Rick. Let me interrupt you for a second because I have a question that maybe other people have. I can make ad copy. 
saying what you want to say is not the hard part. I think it's putting it into a pretty ad, the art part. Have you used or do you recommend we go to someplace like Fiverr and have somebody do that for us? And, and I'll, I'll mute myself now. Uh, yeah. So just real quick, Rick, just to make sure. So you're asking me about the image or the or the video portion of it. You're good at ad copy, but you struggle with uh, graphic design, for example. Exactly. I mean, I can do a video. Anybody can do a video. It won't be as pretty as, you know, having your picture on it like you're doing. Yeah. The ad copy, the compelling copy, I can write it. It's it's putting it into a pretty ad, the, the art of it. Yeah. Yeah, so if you see my drawings, I can't make a, I mean, I, I draw like a kindergartner, so you don't want me making your graphic design. We're probably similar to that respect. Um, I'm not an artist. I, I It's not what I, I do. I do have graphic arts. I, I have two graphic artists on my staff at this point, and they do everything for me. Um, again, I have those assets available, you know, for us. But yes, I have absolutely, when I first got started, before I had all these assets, I went to Fiverr. Absolutely. And you know, the problem with, with Fiverr is you, it depends on who you get. And, you know, but I would say just go back and forth to get the look that you want to get. Um, but yes, absolutely. It's relatively inexpensive for an agent to get somebody off of Fiverr. And, you know, there's, I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff in there, including PowerPoint presentations. I mean, they'll do everything for you in that, which is what I like about it. I absolutely have, I haven't used it in a while because I have, you know, a staff that does pretty much everything for us, but I certainly would use it in the future if I needed to. So I hope that answers your question. So, you know, you have the art and you have the science. And and again, your ad copy needs to match the pictures. It needs to match the video. When you click on the, the link, the landing page or the follow-on page, depending on the process that you're using. Uh, Stephen, what company? What do you mean? What is my company? Is page No, the one you just mentioned about the art, con about the, making the art. Oh, PowerPoint. yeah, Fiverr, F. I V E R R. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Evan put it in there. It's good. Um, go in there and put in graphic artists in the search in the search thing, and you'll see uh, you 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 submit what you want done, and you pay X amount of money, and you can get stuff done for like five bucks. Some of them are a lot more than that, just depending on how much re, how many revisions or whatever. But I've literally had websites built out of there for like three hundred dollars that are pretty darn good. You know, so there's lots of things that you can get done in Fiverr. Um, you'd be surprised. It's a good, it's a good resource. But again, I like control. And so I have everything in, internally at this point for us. So, so how do you do ad copy? Um, this is how I do it. I, I don't know that it would necessarily work for everybody. And we're going to do a little bit of a workshop here. So hopefully you have some pen and paper and you're getting ready to write some stuff down because we're going to do a little workshop. But the short version is when I do something Especially if it's just not coming natural to me right off the top, I will write words, one or two word description words of my product or service, and I'll just start writing them down randomly. And then I'll prioritize those words from top to bottom in what I believe to be the most important thing that if I were the person reading this, these are the things, these are the words that I'm going to want to see in my ad copy. And then I turn those words into sentences. And sometimes it works. Uh, sometimes it does not because you are limited on characters based on the medium that you're using. For example, Google has a limit. You're much more limited in Google than you are in Facebook, but but Facebook has its limits as well, right? And it's same newspaper depending on where you're sending it. So there's lots of mediums. So that's how I do it. I write down word for word, one word at a time or two words next to each other, usually no more than three. And I'll just randomly write down as I'm looking at whatever it is I'm about to look at. And we're going to do this together as a group uh, in a little quick workshop here. So get that pen and paper ready. And I'm going to prioritize or rank those words, the most important to the least important. And then I'm going to make those into a sentence. And then I'm going to um, then pare it down based on the medium I'm using. So if I'm only limited to you know 15 words or X amount of characters in my, in my ad copy based on where I'm placing the ad, then I'm going to literally have the most important stuff in the in the front. And that's it. Um, it's why we do the ranking. Okay. You need to write like a third grader. I think the average education in the United States is, is sixth grade. So, you know, I have two bachelor's degrees. I mean, if I write like my wife has a master's degree in, in English literature, if my, she struggles with my advertisement because it is so simple, um, she wants to grade it all the time. Wrong answer because the you got to put it in the words uh, and in the education level of your client. So uh, don't make it complicated. Three blind mice. I mean, that's if that's what it is, that's what it is. I can help you. 
That's a phrase, right? I mean, that's something simple. Use bold and highlight on key words within sentences. If you have more than one sentence, then have a space in between the sentences if possible, okay? And, you know, this last one, again, we're not going to get into politics, I promise, but I was actually, one of my degrees is in political science. I wanted to go into political campaigns for whatever reason back in the day. I have one, not, nothing to do with that these days, but I'd learned a lot about ad copy from that experience. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. So use political advertisement letters as examples on your end. And then they're getting worse every day, by the way, because the people that are running those campaigns are, are, are not as good. But this is an ad, again, the NRA, whatever, it, your opinion is irrelevant. And so is mine. But politicians are professional beggars, right? They, they beg for money all day long. And this is a political group. Um, simple. There's one sentence right at the top. There's never been a more important time for you to accept the enclosed NRA membership card and carry it with pride. Boom. Simple one sentence. I would probably have not have said all of those words, but this is what they're trying to do. If you just look at this copy of this, um, you know, this is a copy of a letter that I just pulled off of uh, Google. In the middle, your eyes naturally go to, if you want to protect your guns, because it's underlined, in your precious freedoms for you and your children, please act now. Please accept this card and join the NRA today. That's a very... That's probably the entire ad. That's probably all they needed to say. When you look just at the whole thing, your eyes then go naturally to the word hundreds because it's underlined. And then at the bottom, you see, then make your personal commitment to the future of freedom, blah, 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 because it's underlined. So use bold in words. They're not really bolding anything in here. I would, um, but this is what I could find more recently in here. Uh, capital letters will stand out, like all caps. Um, it's almost as if you're yelling, but you can make it stand out. So bold words, use simple sentences, put spaces in between each sentence, try to do one sentence at a time, keep it very simple. Any questions on that from anybody? <laughs> I'm reading your comment, Rick, <laughs> a country repair shop. So keywords, these are universal keywords. And again, I'm not going to get into compliance right now for Medicare, but these keywords right here, I'm just going to tell you they work, you know, brand new. We all want something that's brand new, even if it's not really brand new, right? Fresh, value. If my wife sees the word save, she's buying it, right? Even if it's not really being, it's, it's a save, you know? I mean, it's, it's just, it's a sale is another word that a lot of people will like. So these are universal keywords that if you throw in your ad copy, trust me, they're gonna work, okay? Brand new program. For people of low income, like I'm right now, I'm literally just making it up as I go for what would be the beginning of an ACA ad. It's an attention getter. One of the nice things about insurance on that note is every single year on January 1st, there's something new coming out. Or if you're an AEP, um, you know, right around October. So we have natural uh, things to make things new, fresh, and so on. It's one of the nice things I like about it. But again, I'm not getting to compliance. So workshop example. Without using, so everybody, if you can want to participate, this would be awesome. Take out a, uh, a, a, a some paper and write down exactly what you see in the middle of the screen there. Just write one word descriptors. And I got what I'm showing you from a doctor, by the way, who recently passed away, rest his soul. Um, but a long time ago, he told me that if you have to describe what you see as a doctor, and, and he would have to write on this particular apple, a five page paper in medical school. Imagine that. So just write down, take 15, 20 seconds and write down what you see. And we're going to actually make an ad for this apple. All right, who wants to go? Who wants to take one for the team? <laughs> Mr. Schaefer. You said one word, so I just put apple. Your ad copy failed. <laughs> I like this word. We're definitely going to use the word apple. So we're going to say that is absolutely one of the words we want to use on our list. Who else has some words that they want to use? Macintosh apple. There, okay, Macintosh. If I was selling Macintosh. All right. Uh, Annette, what do you got? I have red, shiny, delicious. Do you want me to go on like the whole list? Yep. Plump, juicy, crunchy, fresh, ripe. Plump, juicy, fresh, and ripe. Yep. All right. So let's go with those. So we have apple, Macintosh, red, shiny, delicious, plump, juicy, fresh, and ripe. And I want to sell this apple in an ad copy, All right? Does anybody in here think we need to put the word Macintosh in there? No, I'll take that back. The word fresh. <laughs> right. The word, the word fresh is the one that jumped out the most of everything she said. Yeah, and I'm not ripping on you, Steve. I trust me. I would. Oh, no, I no. definitely look at this and this think Macintosh. This is a this is a great lesson. Yeah, 
And again, I got this from a medical doctor, gynecologist, and he and he was trying to get me to go to college to use my brain to just to you know. And he told me that they would show an apple, and he actually put an apple, which is why I put an apple in here. And he would write a five to ten page paper on describing an apple. And I'm like, yeah, but it's. But I said the same thing that Matt said. I'm like, it's an apple. <laughs> and he goes, no, it's not. It's a round spherical. Blah 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 blah. And he would just describe this thing. And that's what doctors have to do. And so for me, that's why early on in my life, I was probably 18 or 19. You know, I, I, I this is probably why I had copy comes natural to me. But I think we all like the word fresh. I like that word. So I'm going to put that as, you know, one. Um, and, and again, I could be wrong, right? That's why we come up with different ad copies and we won't get in all that. So we also have juicy. I think juicy probably sells. Um, so that's in the top words. Um, delicious. When people want to eat something, they want delicious. That might even be, you know, it's not completely red, but I could describe it as red, right? So so that's four. And then obviously the word apple in this case is easy because it is an apple. So the ad, just based on what I, just really quick, what I did without in, in this group setting, as I said, this is a fresh, juicy, delicious red apple. That's my ad copy or part of my ad copy. And because I know from spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally millions of dollars, I'm going to add these universal keywords in here, like save, value, fresh, new, All right? We got one in there, fresh. I might put brand new, dot, 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 fresh, juicy, delicious, red apple, save money now, something like that. I mean, I'm just making this up literally as I go. And I've never run an ad for an apple in full disclosure. Maybe I should try it just to see what would happen. Everybody see where I'm going here? Do you change the words around at all? Yes. Like I'm just looking at like I'm, I'm saying to myself, fresh, delicious, juicy, yeah. red apple. And even, just and, even better, Steve, and, and even better, Steve, one of the nice things is you don't have to be right because yeah. the order of words absolutely matter. And words absolutely mean things. And what do I mean by what I'm what I'm saying? You don't have to be right. I won't get into this part of the science in the class. I wasn't really intended to do it, but I'll just explain it right now. You can have the same image, this apple, as your image, right, in your ad. And you can have, let's say, four or five versions of ad copy. You can literally change the words around. And no kidding, you're going to find out that certain combinations of words in certain orders perform better than others. So that's what's cool about advertisement, if you really get into the science of it, is you don't have to be right. You can just keep putting ad out there after ad after ad and using Facebook as an example. And Google, the same thing. And I, and I won't get into the whole structure, but... The bottom line is you can do the same exact ad and um, add, uh, when I say add, um, image or, or video, and then simply just change up the ad copy to match wherever you want to, however you want. And you can have five literally different ads. If you want to get really cool, then eventually you change all the, the, uh, the video or the image. And then eventually you find the best ad copy and the best video and image. And now you have your ad, but that takes a lot of effort. I can tell you that, but yeah, there is no right or wrong answer. It's the, the right answer is the one that works at the end of the day, but this is, it gives you a format in my mind for you to do your own advertisement again, free of compliance, because we're not going to get into all that right now. Um, all right. So go ahead and write down what you see. All right. So who wants to go on this one? Anybody? I don't play video games, so I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a I've got a brand new PlayStation 3. Act now to save. Okay. Um what if I don't know what a what if I'm Rick and I don't know what a PlayStation 3 is? Video game console. Okay. Do you Rick is a little older. Do you think he wants to play Mario Brothers? <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm trying to get you to say a right. word, one word. And that would be entertainment. I was just thinking that too. Yeah. Yep, if you know right anything, on. Right. If you know anything about a PS3, you would have to have product knowledge other than just looking at this picture. You know that you can, you know, do Netflix and all the other jazz on there, you know, and play video games. Yeah. Right. Agreed. So let's just assume for a minute that Rick has no desire to have video games in 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 um, you know, play video games. So he's gonna think he's not gonna buy it. Let's just let's just change the audience because the audience does matter. And I want to sell a PS3 to Rick. Not, and I'm not saying he's actually gonna buy it, but you know, for those that don't know, he's a little older. Um, and he's I'm guessing not gonna play Super Mario Brothers today. Okay. So why would somebody like Matt, why would somebody like Rick want to have a PS3 in his house? For his family. For his grandkids. Yeah. Because those little rugrats are gonna come over and run his house into the ground. And he's going to want, and so the ad for somebody else, the audience does matter. He's going to want to throw that, the what the product's going to do, which is going to keep everybody quiet. 
for example. So, you know, again, that's not describing this thing, but you're describing, um, we call it future pacing, but you're, you're describing what it'll do for somebody later on. It'll take away his pain, which is his kids breaking off, you know, the family vase is, you know, vast, it's been, you know, on the shelf or whatever, you know. All right, here's the yeah. next one. Ready to go? Imagine you have to come up with an ad copy for whatever this ridiculous thing is. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a hint. Don't always just use words to describe this thing, which is what I was getting at before. Use words that are going to give them the benefit. How about save your feet? Yeah. Or something similar. Yeah. Like, why would you put your feet in this thing? Because they hurt. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So take away the pain. I like that. That might be a... Instant relief. Yeah, there you go. Relax. So you Obviously, think... you know, the word massage comes into play, you know. You might want to use the word comfortable. I don't know. I'm, I'm literally... But that's what you... When, when you see stuff, you just want to come up with descriptive words. And if the... Like, this is a weird thing to put in ad copy, right? I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> kind of... Ugly. What's that, Annette? Did you ever use one of those? I have. Uh, they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Well, why, why, why are they awesome? This is what we need to put in the ad copy. Well, they provide relief. They're soothing, relaxing. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I put. That's the ad. Yeah. Right. On an Apple, it's different. You know, um, some things like a PS3, it, it can be, you know, some things you can just literally describe. It's a black biomedic massage chair. Save now. All right. I'm not saying that wouldn't be good, but I probably would also add all of these other words that I just used to to do my ad copy, for example. Go You're ahead. pretty much saying just like, uh, you know, I sold furniture. So you you want to limit the the features and, and stress the benefits. <laughs> you do, but you want to rank everything, in my opinion, from top to bottom. Well, just throw it all out there. Just put it all out on your paper. And then you're going to want to rank what you believe to be the most important. And the reason why you want to rank, if you recall is because you're limited on how many characters you can use depending on, you know, wherever. Gotcha. You, right. Because you, you, Google is very limited. I can tell you that right now. It's very hard to do advertisement on Google because you're just limited to a very small number of things. Facebook, you, you're not really limited, but um, you kind of are based on how they set up their formats. So thanks, Sean. You just want a quick one sentence in written in sixth grade education. Boom. And that's what you want to get enough to get them to go to the video or the act or the image itself. So colors, now I'm talking landing pages, I'm talking um, the the videos, I'm talking the images. Um, don't clash colors. You know, what I'm really saying here is don't do your color scheme like I dress. <laughs> I can't get dressed in the morning, you know, I just so I just wear gray and black pretty much and white. So that, that's easy, but don't clash your colors. And I don't know an example, you know, I don't know, like pink and blue, I don't know if that really matches or not. But again, don't let me dress your, your, your kids because they'll look a little dumb. Use bright and bold colors. And it really leads to the very last point, which is you're going to want to stand out in a sea of advertisement that is out there. There is a bazillion ads all over the place and you want to stand out. Um, things like motion, which I'll get into in a minute. Colors that fit your product and service. So does anybody know what the color is for North Carolina University? Sky blue. Yeah, you know what I call it? North Carolina blue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Wouldn't it be stupid if... They came out in red, you know, or an advertisement or something in red. Like that's their color. That is what they do. And all of their clothes, everything that you buy from the University of North Carolina is in the blue. That's very similar to the blue <clears throat> at the bottom of my screen because I like North Carolina. If you're using a submit button on a landing page or like a go or submit or give me your information, I, generally you want to use, believe it or not, burnt orange or green. You can go into psychology of those colors, but I'll tell you that in California, the People's Republic of California, right, Rick? They uh, they did a study. There were all these people that had passed, that died in a fire, right, at a red sign that said exit. And the only thing they could come up with is, is red means stop. So every every exit sign, or for the most part, in California is now green for this reason, because green means go. So you're going to want to use colors that mean certain things to society. Yellow means hazard. But for whatever reason, burnt orange is the color that I would recommend you use uh, for your submit button. It, it, it actually gets a very good response from it. Again, you're going to want to stand out in a sea of ads when you use your color schemes. My brother still lives there, and, and uh, I lived in California for a while, and I, I like it, but you know, there's things I don't like about it. Videos. When, when I do images and videos, this is probably the hardest thing for me to teach people, but 
you're going to want to have motion, some sort of movement if you're doing a video. It could just be sparkles on the screen, and it's just going to stand out. If you go through Instagram, or you go through Facebook, or you just start looking at ads from a, a purely analytical standpoint and see why this thing made you stand out on your computer screen or on your phone. What about it? Without even reading the ad copy, what about the the video or the or the image that made you stop and look at it and maybe write it down so that you can use that technique for yourself? Uh, same thing in the newspaper. And I, I have a quick question for you. Um, yeah, this talking? is Michelle. Oh, hi. Michelle, hi. Um, okay, so there's a, a Mrs. Medicare group that they they were changing up some some ads and she was very adamant that you don't change ads. She wanted to leave them pink and purple. And it was like, hold on. And But she was describing Medicare. So like we use the color blue because it, it shows trust and, and things like that. So I didn't know if, but granted, all, most Medicare ads are red and blue, right? Because we, we try to connect with Medicare. But I didn't know, do you advise against that or for that? Like if we were to change up the color Personally, I don't think it's a good idea, but then like you said, you might need to stand out amongst the rest of the ads. So what are your thoughts on using colors that aren't normally used? I think if it stands out, the answer is I would use it. I would get away from the word, never change my colors in my ad. I'm running an ad for a person uh, who's actually in here today. And I never in a thousand years would have told you that ad copy would have worked, but I went with it because it just, there was just something about it. And his leads are cheaper than mine. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. Um, so I'm going to what we're doing there. But you have to get out of your comfort zone. My comfort zone is that color blue right there when I'm doing Medicare. I'm at the bottom of the screen. It's medical, the medical blue, right? The North Carolina blue. So I try to use that a lot. Would I use a purple in an ad? Probably not naturally. <laughs> me personally, I wouldn't use me personally. I probably wouldn't naturally use a pink or naturally use a purple, but that's because I'm me, right? Would I do it though? Because it would work? Yes, I would. If I tried it and it worked, I'm going to run with it and I'm, and I'm going to wear purple. And I'm going to be like a Teletubby or whatever, you know? So <laughs> yes. Thank you. But if the ad isn't, but the answer, Michelle, is if the ad isn't working, then change it. Don't use that word. Never, never say never. There's a movie, right? Yeah. UCLA blue. Sure. Newspaper. I, I, we get a lot of people who literally rip out the newspaper ad. We'll run like quarter page ads or eighth page ads or whatever. And we use full color. Why do I use full color? I don't have an example here. Why do I use full color? Because everybody else is using black and white. And it costs me a little bit more money. But I get a lot. I've never lost money on newspaper ads. I'm not saying we're making a ton of money off of newspaper ads. But they just stand out. People will rip it off and just walk right into my office with it. And when you just go through the newspaper and flip through it real quick without trying to read anything and just boom, something's going to stand out. And nine times out of 10, it's a black and white newspaper. And what's going to stand out is a color ad. So it's worth the money, in my opinion, okay, for what we're doing it. Maybe not for everybody. No different than if you're looking on Facebook, Google, Yahoo, Bing, Instagram, Twitter, and all the rest, just different mediums. So I literally pulled these up about two hours ago. And I'm going to show you how I see the world of advertisement. And hopefully this helps somebody. But on the left is I get a lot of retirement ads for some reason. I'm not retiring anytime soon, but I, whatever, I, you know, I get I get a lot of ads. So for investments in retirement. So look at the ad copy on the top left above the crafting your retirement blueprint. But let's let's critique the ad copy matching up with the image. And what you see there is it says Hopefully you can see it on your screen, but if not, it says Rome wasn't built in a day and your retirement plan shouldn't be either. I like that. I don't know. I think it's kind of nifty. I think it stands out. Uh, then the next sentence is, here are some tips to get you started. I, I don't like that personally. I don't like that second part. <clears throat> and then the next part, then you go to the image itself. It says crafting your retirement blueprint. And then all of a sudden I see virtual workshop August 30th through 1 p.m. Central Time sign up. I don't like the copy, the image matching to the ad copy, and I don't like the ad copy. It sounds like I'm going to make a blueprint, and then I'm really going to a workshop. Like, there's a mistrust in my mind going on. Personally, I'm not saying I'm correct. I, this is just how I see the world. So if they want to have a virtual workshop, I would absolutely mention, again, if I'm limited, I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't, but I'm probably going to put virtual workshop in my ad copy. Does that make sense? It's probably more important to say what you're going to do than to say Rome wasn't built in the day and neither in your retirement plan shouldn't be either. You know, so what are we selling? We're, these people here are selling a virtual workshop to craft their retirement plan. Well, that's the ad copy. 
if there's more, if you're able to put more characters in your ad, like you would in a Facebook ad, then maybe you would add Rome wasn't built in a day and maybe in your retirement plan shouldn't be either. And then it says, here are some tips to get you started. There's no tips being provided. When you click on this, I can tell you, it's just a link to enter your name and information to go into a virtual workshop. Okay, that's I, I clicked on I click on ads all the time because I want to see if it's all matching up. And I'm not going to rip on uh, United Healthcare, but they're the worst of the worst. Like they'll have an ad about dual leads, and you click on it, and there's nothing on dual leads on the landing page. And that's what happened here. There are no tips anywhere on the landing page at all. And so this is creating a mistrust in the client. Do you see kind of where I'm coming from when I put this all together? Hopefully, Motley Fool uh, is a some sort of investment thing. They they do some really cool ads in my opinion, but let's look at the ad copy without looking at the image. In this report, discover how to invest without forget, forgetting a crucial factor, the way you'd like to enjoy retirement. Okay. So basically it sounds like they want you to invest thinking about your future, um, maybe. And then you go in the bottom, it says winning in retirement, a foolish approach to health, happiness, and investing. I don't know, it's not terrible, but it seems like it's not matching up you know, in the way it could be. I think what they're trying to sell me here is, is again, some sort of retirement planning thing and discover how to invest without forgetting a crucial factor the way you'd want to enjoy retirement. I don't know. I see that as more complicated, not sixth grade, not simple. There's a, there's a colon in there. I, I don't know. I don't like it. I, I wouldn't do it. But I can tell you, here's the thing. Despite my opinion, the company on the left is one of the largest RIA companies in the United States. And I'm actually one of their agents <laughs> for my investment side. So, you know, hey, I'm not always right. It's, it's working for them. I, I know that their lead cost and acquisition cost is extremely high. It's substantially higher than mine. Okay? These are ones that I've kind of liked. Let's look at the juice box thing. Notice the logo color of juice box on the right is orange. And notice the ad is orange, nine-step IUL sales process. And it's basically, it's trying to get you to learn how to sell IULs and annuities. Use this nine-step script to sell more IUL and annuities every single week. And if that's all you see on your phone from this Facebook ad, the image says nine-step IUL sales script. Boom. That is a great ad, in my opinion. It all matches up. The image matches the sale, matches the ad copy. Now, there's more ad copy in this particular ad because it is Facebook and they allow you to use more ad copy. On the left, prepare for retirement. You've worked your entire life dreaming about with our retirement planning toolkit, high net worth edition. The first word that I see when I look at that, so my, I put my eyes to that side of the screen. I see the word retirement. I see high net worth edition because those things are just standing out. And then when I look a little closer, I see planning toolkit. Again, all of this is matching the ad copy. So I would say these are, are better examples than the ones that I just showed previously. Any questions, comments, concerns? Um, well, that's that's all for today. If you have questions, this is the time. Feel free. Hopefully this helps somebody. Can you share your email in the chat? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It's just my, I will, it's my first name. Evan, can you put it in there? My first name at patriotfamilyfinancial.com. Yeah. So it's Sean, S-E-A-N at patriotfamilyfinancial.com. Easy enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Feel free to log out if you'd like, but um, we're we're basically done on my end. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. This is Rick. Actually, I just want to thank you for your time. Well, yeah. thank you, sir. Thank I appreciate you. it. Great information. And I'm, I'm going to use it. Okay. Well, hopefully it was worth you getting out of bed early today. And thanks. I thanks for picking on me because I'm old. <laughs> thanks, yeah. for, thank you, thanks for joining us, sir. I appreciate you. Extremely helpful. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I do have to ask this question every time I see your last name. You're not related to from from like World War II, are you? Uh, no. That's, <laughs> we'll, we'll go. We'll go with a hard no. A hard no. All right. Hard no. That's that's a New Jersey thing. We'll go with a hard no. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you. Thanks for thanks for coming today. And if you have any questions, just just shoot me an email or ask in the chat group or whatever. Thank you again. Yeah, Annette, you got anything or no? I'm all set. Thank you very much. It's helpful.